In our last video, we talked about file name conventions. In this video, we'll talk about creating files and editing files. The easiest way to create a file in the terminal environment is the touch command. As you can see, we only have one test.txt. Let's make another. Note the date on the file. That's the file's M time, the last time it was modified. That's coming off the inode table. Touch always modifies a file, even if it creates it. The next easiest way to create a file is with a text editor. We'll use nano. So why should we learn a terminal editor? Text editing is one of those things that GUIs actually do better than terminal applications. But it's still useful to know at least one terminal mode editor to use on servers that don't have GUIs or where the GUI is broken. Why nano? The most traditional editor is VI. It's present in literally every Unix-like operating system I've ever encountered, but most Linux systems come with Nano. It has some important advantages. It's more modern than VI and makes use of advanced terminal controls. It's less complicated than Emacs, which is the other choice. The big advantage is that it tells you how to do the most common tasks across the bottom. This is very useful on an editor that you don't use every day. If your distribution doesn't come with Nano, like this Fedora virtual machine, it's worth installing it now so that when the system is so messed up that it won't boot all the way, Nano is already on it. If you already know VI or Emacs, feel free to install and use either one. Terminal window text editing has a couple of conventions that are alien to GUI editors and their users. Nano has buffers. In Nano, a body of text is in a buffer. A buffer can be copied in from a file or copied out to a file, but the text you can touch is in the buffer. This is important because if you don't tell Nano to save that buffer to a file, it doesn't. So we've edited this file. You can see that I've put text in it. I tell it to exit. It asks me if I want to save the modified buffer. If I answer no, the data goes away. Pressing Control O explicitly writes the file. If you're making a lot of edits on a system that isn't stable, writing frequently will save you a lot of headaches. It asks for a file name, even though we specified one when we started Nano, in case we want to change our minds. You can read another file into your buffer with Control R. Nano will insert the contents of that file where your cursor is right now. You can search for text in the current buffer with Control W. And you can repeat it simply by hitting Control W again and pressing Return. The search will wrap. So now that I'm at the bottom of this file, if I search again, it will wrap to the top. Control backslash will replace text in the file. It asks for the old text and the new text. If it finds any occurrences of the old text, it will ask you if you want to replace that or if you want to replace all occurrences at once. And we do. As with search, this command will wrap from the bottom of the buffer to the top. Here's where buffers become really important. There's a second buffer in Nano called the cut buffer. If you move the cursor to a line and press Control K, it takes that line out of the main buffer and puts it in the cut buffer. If you want that line somewhere else, move your cursor there and press Control U for uncut. Nano has a lot more options than these. They're listed if you press Control G. There are two types of link. The symbolic link, which is a directory entry that refers to another directory entry, and the hard link, which is a directory entry that points to the inode table entry of an existing file. LN stands for link. It creates the links between files. It takes two parameters. The first is the file that already exists. The second is the name you want the link to have. It also takes a flag, minus s, to tell it to create a symbolic link rather than a hard link. If we look, we have a file called test1 and one called test.txt. So I'm going to create a link from test1 and call it test2. I'm going to make it a symbolic link. There's nothing actually in this file. If I remove test1, you can see that even though the test2 link still exists, it doesn't point to anything. By contrast, if I create a hard link called test2 to test1, and I remove test1, test2 is still here. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about moving and renaming files.